my dear students welcome i hope you know we are discussing antifungal drugs and this is a continuation of the first session of antifungal agents on the first session we had described amphotericin b and we had discussed the azole antifungal agents and we had also classified the antifungal agents according to mechanism of action and we had classified the antifungal agents according to the use for systemic infection and the superficial infection so the drugs used by systemic route of administration for systemic infection systemic mycosis where amphotericin b in the first place and after that there were azole antifungals and there are two more one is flu cytosine and the next one is caspofungin so now we've come up to flu cytosine that's 5 fc and let's start discussing 5 fc 5 fc is a pyrimidine anti metabolite and it gets converted by the enzyme cytosine d aminase into 5 fu 5 fc is not active it acts it gets converted into 5 fu that's 5 fluorouracil this 5 fluorouracil also needs further activation and it needs to get triphosphorylated so when it gets triphosphorylated it gets incorporated into the fungal rna and then it inhibits the thymidylate synthetase finally inhibiting the synthesis of thiamine so 5 fc ultimately is going to decrease the thiamine synthesis and this is how it's going to have anti metabolite action So this is a drug which inhibits the nucleic acid synthesis. 5 FC or 5 FU when we speak about these particular drugs is orally effective good penetration in the CNS but there is rapid resistance on using alone and there is a narrow spectrum of activity. So as far as 5 FC is concerned the most important fact to be remembered is very good penetration in the CNS but we can't think of using it alone. because there is very rapid resistance if it is used alone and it's got a narrow spectrum of activity so we don't use it alone we use it with amphotericin b and especially when it is cryptococcal meningitis or systemic candida infection flu cytosin will be used along with amphotericin b and this is going to decrease the dose requirement of amphotericin b and which could be helpful to minimize the toxic effects of amphotericin b as well as to decrease the cost of treatment adverse effects of 5 fc is bone marrow suppression i have just written bone marrow in red color hope you understand is bone marrow suppression this is going to lead to leukopenia neutropenia because we are not just talking about 5 fc is as good as we are talking about an anti cancer drug that's 5 fu which is the active form which is finally producing this anti fungal action in addition to this being an anti cancer agent it can produce alopecia and it can produce liver damage and kidney damage so that's about flu cytosine the next group of agents used systemically for systemic fungal infections is echinocandins namely caspofungin micafungin and anedula fungin they are also called as fungins this is a new group in antifungal drugs and they inhibit the synthesis of beta 13 glucan the beta 13 glucan is required for the cell wall synthesis or the synthesis of the cell membrane these drugs have to be used by intravenous route of administration and they are currently reserved reserved for which patients the patients who cannot tolerate amphotericin b or azoles or the patients who do not respond to the use of amphotericin b or azoles so your mainstay of treatment is going to be amphotericin b and or azoles and when the patient doesn't tolerate this primary line of treatment or when the patient doesn't respond to this treatment you think of using echinocandins in which situations in invasive aspergillosis and in systemic candidiasis the important notable adverse effect of echinocandin is it releases histamine and the histamine release does two things one is flushing of face and due to the vasodilation and secondly there will be hypotension that's fall in the blood pressure 
So this is something about the newer antifungal agents, echinocandins. So this was the discussion until here about the systemic mycosis and the drugs used by systemic route of administration for systemic mycosis. Now we move on to discuss the drugs used for superficial mycosis, superficial fungal infections. As we already said, for superficial fungal infections, the infection may not be amenable to the local treatment or the local or topical treatment may not be sufficient for this superficial fungal infection. In such situations, we need to use systemic drugs. So it's a superficial mycosis, but we are using systemic drugs for this. The first drug used systemically is called griseofulvine. Need to remember that griseofulvine is fungistatic, it's not a sidal agent. And because it's a static agent, the duration of treatment is very long and it could last for 6 to 12 months. So please note, when you put the patient on griseofulvine, a long treatment is likely to be required. What griseofulvine does or how it acts is it gets distributed to the stratum corneum and it binds first to keratin. And after binding to keratin, it interferes the microtubule function. Then it's going to inhibit the synthesis and polymerization of the nucleic acid. So this is used for severe dermatophytosis, for example, of skin, of the hair and the dermatophytosis of nail. And the examples of such diseases is when it affects the feet, you call it tenia pedis. When it affects the nails, you call it onychomycosis. And when it affects the scalp, you call it tenia tapetis, scalp. So these are some examples of the dermatophytosis. Griseofulmine is known to produce certain adverse effects, certain common adverse effects. Is there's incidence of headache, peripheral neuritis, and phototoxicity. Notable thing to remember is, although we are talking of the superficial mycosis, griseofulmine is not useful for candida infections. So once you think of candida, never take name of griseofulmine. Next important thing is, it is not active by topical route of administration. So griseofulmine cannot be applied locally. The third important pharmacokinetic fact about griseofulvine is, it is, an, it is a potent inducer of hepatic microsomal enzymes. If you remember the last session we spoke about azole antifungals and we said they are potent inhibitors of the hepatic microsomal enzymes. Griseofulvine is an inducer of hepatic microsomal enzyme and if the patient is receiving this drug for a long time, which the patient is obviously going to receive, is going to increase the metabolism of certain drugs and is going to reduce their effect. The absorption of griseofulvine is increased if you give griseofulvine tablet with high fat containing foods. So if you want to have increased absorption, it's always consumed after high fat food. Superficial mycosis, drugs used by systemic route of administration. We have the next drug that's terbinafine. I'm including it here because it's used by oral route of administration, that's the systemic route, as well as it can be used by topical route of administration. Mechanism of action, the first substance we discussed in the cell membrane synthesis was squalene and squalene gets converted to lanosterol and the enzyme involved is squalene epoxidase. So terbinafine inhibits this step, squalene to lanosterol inhibits the enzyme squalene epoxidase and finally is going to decrease the ergosterol synthesis because lanosterol is destined to get converted into ergosterol. So the step inhibited is squalene to lanosterol. Terbinafine cumulates in the skin and cumulates in the nails and this is useful only for the dermatophytosis of skin, hair and nail and another indication for terbinafine is candida infection. Terbinafine can produce hypersensitivity reaction, skin rashes, gastrointestinal GI intolerance, headache, so it looks like griseofulvine in this regard. The second important adverse effect noted is increase 
in the liver enzymes so the liver function test will be abnormal there will be elevation of the liver enzymes and then it can lead to hepatotoxicity the difference between griseofulmin and terbinafine is griseofulmin is a static agent terbinafine is fungicidal and because it's a sidal drug the treatment length is going to be shortened where we said about griseofulmin of 6 to 12 months with terbinafine the length of treatment can be cut down to 3 months so that's the major difference between griseofulmin and terbinafine the third group of drugs which are used for superficial mycosis by systemic route of administration are azoles and as you know the names are ketoconazole, fluconazole, itraconazole it's a superficial mycosis and we don't want to give the drug for a long time we don't want to have more adverse effects we don't want to increase the cost of treatment because it's a superficial fungal infection and we are using the azoles by systemic route of administration so there's one way of doing it is give the treatment with these drugs for one week and then give a rest period of three weeks this is called pulse therapy and why this is allowed and why we could do it because if you compare it with giving the drug daily continuously and compare it with giving the treatment just for one week and giving three weeks rest it's not producing a great change in the outcome so the pulse therapy that's rest for three weeks and treatment for one week this helps to minimize the toxicity of azole antifungals and it as we said it decreases the cost of treatment so azole antifungals can be used for superficial mycosis if it's severe by systemic route of administration for dermatophytosis of skin hair and nails let me remind you tinea microsporum and trichophyton these are the organisms responsible for this dermatophytosis next we move on to the topical antifungals antifungal agents are used topically when the fungal infection is superficial and when you are sure that just topical treatment is enough and we don't have to go for the systemic management a very useful and important drug in this group is a polyne antibiotic a polyne antifungal agent is the same from the group of amphotericin B so the name of the drug is nistatin the mechanism of action is exactly same like amphotericin B because it's a polyne antibiotic it binds to ergosterol and produces artificial pores and disrupts the cell membrane that's the mechanism of nistatin and this is especially useful for local treatment of oral candidiasis oropharyngeal candidiasis and is also useful for the management of vaginal candidiasis as far as the oral and oropharyngeal candidiasis is concerned you have a nistatin solution and which is known by the name oral swish and swallow you are supposed to take the solution in your mouth keep it there for some time gargle the solution and instead of spitting it off you swallow the solution so there's a chance because you want to affect not just the oral candida there might be the oropharyngeal candida this also will get affected so oral swish and swallow this is the method of nistatin use for oral and oropharyngeal candidiasis this type of candidiasis is found extremely commonly if the patient is suffering from bronchial asthma and is receiving corticosteroids by the route of inhalation I hope you know biodesonide and beclomethasone dipropionate these are the commonly used steroids by the route of inhalation and since these are glucocorticoids these are steroids they make the patient more susceptible to infections and one of the common infections found with the steroid use inhalational use is the candidiasis so it could be oral or oropharyngeal candidiasis the drug of choice is nistatin the second group of drugs used by topical route of administration is azole antifungals and when we were discussing systemic drugs we spoke of ketoconazole we spoke of fluconazole itraconazole now here for topical use 
there are different azoles which are preferred. We have meconazole, clotriamazole, terconazole and butoconazole. And this way these azoles are used topically for the management of candida and for the dermatophytic infections. The other antifungal agents include tolnaftate, undesilinic acid and haloprogen. So this is the summary of the topical antifungal agents used by the topical route of administration. When this chapter of antifungal drugs is getting over, I would like to remind you of two facts of two things. Number one, the azole antifungals, especially ketoconazole, produces inhibition of the cytochrome P450 enzyme system. So there is HMES inhibition. And there is another drug which we discussed under the antifungal agents. It is griseofulvin that has exactly opposite effect on the cytochrome P450 dependent system and that is induction of the enzyme system. So if you are using an azole for long time, it is going to inhibit the metabolism of other substances and is going to lead to toxic effect of those drugs. Whereas if you are using griseofulvin, is going to produce induction that stimulation of the CP450 enzyme system and is going to decrease the effect of other substances. So these two could be notable drug interactions when you are using these antifungal agents. I hope you like this short session on the antifungal drugs and I am sure you will make a good use of it. Thank you very much for listening and best of luck.